G'day, g'day folks, welcome to This Cycling Live. I've had a lot of questions this year um, about motivation and about a related topic actually, which is what kind of mindset does it take to be a champion? Um, I've lucky, been lucky enough in, in my cycling career to have been on the top step of the podium a few times. Um, and of course, I've got some amazing friends out there in the world, guys like Alan Davis and Michael Rogers, um, who've, who've really reached the pinnacle um, of, of success as a winner. So what I'd like to do today is just share a few insights um, that I have acquired about the psychology uh, of a champion's mindset. So I'm going to talk to four points and I'm going to use a little acronym actually and that acronym is SELF because for me the beginner's mind is all about you, your self perception. So let me start with the S and the S is very simple. It's about self-belief. Okay. But where does self-belief come from? Self-belief actually comes from doing the hard work to perform on the day. So when you've done that hard work, however, your body is ready. It's also then about priming the mind. And what that involves is really believing that you can perform. Right? Now, of course, there's lots of wonderful stories out there in the world, but one that I like very much is the story um, of one of my heroes, Matthew Heyman, um, the Australian cyclist who won the Paris-Roubaix. What an incredible journey of self-belief that was because Heyman believed that he could be victorious in that race. Um, and he went back year after year after year, learning, improving. And after 15 attempts, Heyman won the Paris-Roubaix, in fact, defeating um, Tom Bonham, who had won the race many times uh, before. So what does Heyman say? Heyman says you need to believe. And the other thing you always have to do is just keep riding. Because when you're in an event, um, when you're in a race, things can go wrong. And we'll come back to this point again a little bit later. Um, and you have to believe that you can win. And that will give you the confidence to continue even at times when things go wrong. The second thing um, that I would like to talk about is something which I, I, I actually wish I saw more of, and that is simply the enjoyment or the excitement of being there, being in the race, being at a competition. Um, I've got a little bit of a reputation here in Belgium because you know, I'm known as kind of the happy Aussie guy because whenever I'm at a race, when I'm on the start line, I'm turning the guys around me, I'm greeting them, I'm smiling, I'm often cracking some jokes. Why? Because I feel grateful just to be there. And the sports psychology is an interesting one on this. You know, the sports psychology says if, if you can find joy in the moment, if you can actually find that inner excitement, almost that childish joy of just being there and doing your sport, you tend to be much more relaxed, less stressed and less anxious going into the event. And what that can actually help you to do is to keep a clear head and a clear mind when you need to perform. Okay, so don't be afraid to smile on the start line. You know, don't be afraid to chat to the people around you, um, even to spread, spread some good vibes or some humor, as I often try to do. Uh, give it a try. I mean, again, if we look at the pro ranks, um, a guy who you absolutely see embodying this kind of philosophy is Peter Sagan, right? Peter's always laughing, cracking jokes. He's he's playing his antics on the bike, you can see how much he loves what he does. And in no way does that have a detrimental effect on his performance. Often I think what we see is that his joy and enjoyment and excitement actually lifts his performance um, in, in those events where he, he, uh, he thrives. Um, what's the third aspect? We've covered the S, we talked about the E. The next one for me is L. And that is language. Okay, now when I say language, what do I mean by language? I mean actually the language of talking to yourself. Okay, so um, the research again, the, the psychology research on this shows that very high performing champions, they often have mantras. They often have expressions or sayings that they, they say to themselves when things get tough. Right. So recently I did the Giro Sardinia in Italy. Um, there was a time trial 
and I knew it was going to be a hilly time trial. So going into that race, I had my mantra ready, right? There were about seven or eight small climbs. And what was my mantra? You're going to punch that climb. You're going to punch that climb. So every time I went over a climb, I was saying that to myself, you're going to punch this climb. You're going to punch this climb. Then as I was going down the other side, I was repeating the mantra because I was recovering. I was, br- rep- I was breathing and I'm going to punch this climb. Okay. So what's your mantra? What's your words of affirmation that you can say to yourself? Now, again, for me, I've got a slightly different mantra um, when I'm coming into a sprint finish. You know, again, at a, at a race several years ago, actually, I was there with my coach, Alan Davis, and he was on the motorbike. I had the earpiece in and about a kilometer kilometer and a half from the finish, Alan said one thing into my ear, you can win this, you can win this. And that mantra actually has stayed with me. So whenever I'm coming into the final kilometer, kilometer and a half of a race, what am I repeating in my head? You can win this, you can win this, you can win this. And I take that right to the line. Okay. So have those mantras ready. And the research shows that that they become habitual, they become Um, something which you can draw on to give you that extra mental strength. Now, the other thing, of course, is that this language, it's not just about words, it can also be about body language. So another little trick that I play to, again, boost myself, to bring out that champion's mind, is whenever I go to really big races, you know, the UCI World Series event, World Championships uh, for Grand Fondos, amateurs, what do I do? I always make it a habit. I go to the final half half a kilometer, kilometer of the race, I ride that race. But more importantly than riding that stretch of the race, I cross the finish line with my hands in the air. Okay, I ride across the line with my hands in a victory salute. Right? And what do I say to myself? Jay, you can do this. Right? So it's giving yourself again that experience, that embodiment of what it feels like to win. So have those mantras ready. Use that self-talk to boost up your confidence and don't be afraid also to use your body to build your confidence as well. Okay. Um, What's my last little piece of advice for you here? It's the F. So we're talking about self. The F is what I call fortitude. And what is fortitude? Fortitude is the ability to continue, to carry on, to get up after you've been beaten down. And this is super important because the research across sports, whether we're talking about golf, we're talking about uh, football, we're talking um, about uh, cycling, certainly cyclocross, which is a sport that I'm very fond of. um, What do we see? We see the true champions are the people who can make mistakes, who can have things happen to them, whether that's a mechanical or a mishap. And what do they do? they get right up and they continue again. So this is an amazing video with uh, world champion Matteo van der Poel. And you can see here how he has a mishap early on in the race and he's absolutely being swarmed by riders. He ends up really at the back of the pack, but he doesn't lose his cool. And you see here, he's just calm. He gets back on his bike and through his calmness and his fortitude, he's able to think and here taking the left when everyone's taking the right. And Within a couple of laps of this race, what do you see? He's right back at the front again. So this mental toughness, just so important to have fortitude. uh, Some words from, again, another one of my idols, um, Eddie Merckx. Um, Eddie Merckx says, cyclists live with pain. Um, If you can't handle it, you will win nothing. Okay. But it's not just about the pain, it's also about the mishaps. If you can't deal with a mechanical, if you can't deal with a small crash that you can get up from and continue, um, if you can't rebound from the race not working out for you quite as you expected, you're very unlikely to ever be a champion. So they're more my four pieces of advice uh, on how to bring your champion's mind to bear and not just perform with your body, of course, perform with your head. And that's when all of us can reach our peak performance. So if you've liked this video, please do give it the thumbs up. And of course, please do subscribe to the This Cycling Life YouTube channel.